the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex here in the studio, and I'm joined with Anthony Gucciardi, and we're taking your calls. But I just want to remind you that this hour of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by My Patriot Supply. And we're seeing attacks on our freedoms like never before, but we can secure our independence by breaking free from the confines of their systems of control. The path to liberty starts with attaining a level of self-reliance. My Patriot Supply is the home of a wide array of survival products, including the Patriot Pantry line of emergency food storage products. Patriot Pantry is delicious, nutritious, and it prepares in minutes. Patriot Pantry offers amazing variety, great taste, and is packaged to last up to 25 years. Visit MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex today to experience their top-rated customer service, top-quality products, and their incredibly reasonable prices. The products you need, the service you expect, and the price you can afford. Visit MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today. And we were just talking before the break to RJ in Oklahoma. RJ, you said you didn't think that electoral victories were enough. What do you think it's going to take to roll this back? Well, again, I, I think the first thing is uh, is a spiritual awakening. And, and I believe it's, it's slowly coming. I'm, I'm encouraged by things that I'm seeing. You know, Jesus said to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. And and uh, so along the lines of, of you know, revival, it's, it's important to be hooked up where there's uh, not typically in a conventional church, there's so many things that aren't happening that, uh, uh, and by the way, I, there's a website where I, I could share that, I guess, it, it might direct some people that are, Sure, you can give that to us real quickly, and, I'll, and then I've got a comment. Go ahead. Give us your website, yeah. and then I wanted to comment on that. Uh, it's rjbarnett.wordpress.com. Okay. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And, I, you know, I, I was looking at this article that just came out in the last few days about this homeless Jesus statue and the debate that came up around that. I think what they were trying to get to people is the idea that we do really have individual responsibilities. I think we have for too long, you know, they say that if you've only got a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And I think both for people who are trying to put forward a socialist agenda, as well as unfortunately for many Christians, 
they only see the government as being an effective solution. And so the government is their hammer and they see everything as a nail that needs to be hammered with the government, whether it's keeping people off of drugs or helping them out when they hit bump bumpy times in their life where they get addicted to drugs. They want to hammer everybody with the government rather than taking things on and, and not trusting, not turning this over to an institution, whether it's the government or whether it's some big national charity, because those institutions just don't work and there's no connection there. It's an easy thing for people to not take the individual responsibility to go out there and engage other people and and help them on a one-to-one -one basis. And part of that is is helping them to understand what's being done to them, isn't it, Anthony? They've taken it so far now that they're going after church groups that feed the homeless and confiscating their food and kicking them off the park. Yes. Or yes. in the case of one individual, He's going around with his family, his kids and everything, spending a couple thousand dollars a month on his own food, walking around on the streets, giving homeless people food. And, and he just says something nice, like maybe gives them a, a small Bible or something like that. That's unacceptable. That is evil mm -hmm. in the eyes of the state. And, and I just, I, I think we need to, as, as Christians, we need to kind of check ourselves and see if on some of these things that we think are important, like... The war on drugs, for example, they, you know, Christians don't want to see people addicted to alcohol. They don't want to see them addicted to drugs. So we had alcohol prohibition. Now we got the war on drugs. Can they take a look at some of these things and say, you know what? Marijuana really does help some people who are sick and they use it medically. Or, yeah. or can we just have the compassion not to throw people in jail for lifetime imprisonment because of mandatory minimums that keep them in and let violent criminals out? Can we have that kind of compassionate conservatism? A conservatism that doesn't try to put compassion, run it through the government, run it through these big institutions that don't have any compassion, but rather have it on an individual level and not be so trusting of government to be the only instrument that we have in our bag. Well, it's it's Christian to not want the CIA drug running heroin. Yes. You know, that's yes. the war on drugs. It's, yes. it's, it's a delusion. It's a lie that it's Christian to somehow support this war on drugs or somehow support all this government bureaucratic insanity. The same thing with prohibition. It just led to more alcohol. We need to abolish the war on drugs 100%. Yes, because the government is not your big daddy. It's not going to provide for you and keep you safe. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, actually, what's not Christian is treating the government as God. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. Um, That's right. I identify as a follower of, of, you know, of God and everything. And one thing I'm not going to do is sit back and ask the government to go around and arrest people that are smoking less than, you know, a gram of pot or something in California. That has nothing to do with anything. But even if we got rid of the war on drugs, less people would statistically use drugs. Mm -hmm. So overall, we're relying too much on the big daddy system. And that's why it's come to the point now where you can't even feed the homeless or you go to jail if you try to give them food for Thanksgiving. Yes, that's right. It's also up to us to support the communities and churches that are feeding the homeless. I've done that personally. We need to support those who are being prosecuted, feed the homeless ourselves. Just like uploading ourselves with guns to Facebook to protest that, we need to go out and feed the homeless more. To and even get involved on an individual basis. You know, I think we're going to know that we've had revival come to. It's not revival when we do certain things. It's revival when our perspective has changed on things. And as we saw with the original American Revolution, it was preceded by a spiritual revival. We will know that that has happened when we see people start to take responsibility for themselves, for their families, for their neighbors, and not try to use the government as a hammer to beat each other over the head and with stop it. stop morally judging everyone off of yes. crazy you know, yes. foundations. Everyone is a sinner. Everyone has done things. But at the end of the day, if we're fighting and we're passionate for justice and reality and truth and God, that is power. That is yes. how we defeat the enemy. That's it's right. It's not about morally judging other people. That's, That's right. We win. It's about taking care of each other. Uh, Andrew in Pennsylvania, you had something about winning and the TSA lawsuits. What's your opinion on that? Well, the real reason you can't win TSA lawsuits is not because the TSA is viewed as necessary for safety. The reason you can't win TSA lawsuits is because your uh, tickets, airline tickets, refer to you as passengers, and that's legally defined as a commercial term. And since you're in commerce, the government has authority to regulate you to the point where they can take away your right to not be searched without a warrant. And in order to solve this problem, we would need to change the word passenger into the word traveler, which ha which does not have any legal definition that's commerce specific. Well, you know, the other way that the TSA is winning their well, lawsuits. just a slave instead. <laughs> that's, right, that's a good way to put it. The other way that they're winning their lawsuits is by basically censoring the truth. We had John Corbett, who has been at the forefront 
of these TSA lawsuits. He's probably sued them more than anybody else. He had a video that showed that their naked body scanners were totally ineffective if you had weapons just on the side of your body. But in his latest lawsuit, which I believe, Anthony, is still in play, they mistakenly published on Pacer.gov, which is where all of the lawsuits are supposed to be published, they mistakenly published up there that they realized as of 2011 that there was no terrorist threats against airports or airplanes, but they redacted that. They, they allowed him to see these documents during discovery. He referred to it, quoted from their documents, and then they redacted that out, but then they made the mistake of putting the unredacted copy up there. So we know exactly what they were doing, and at the same time, they said there's no threat. They were threatening the state of Texas with a complete shutdown of the air system because we had the House of Representatives here had passed a bill that would constrain the TSA to treating us like human beings again, like the Constitution requires them to. And so they they blackmailed the state Texas and 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 uh, the Senate. Uh, they they backed out. And of course, our Lieutenant Governor, who was a lifelong CIA guy before oh, yeah. he became Lieutenant Governor, he was alongside bringing that down, wasn't he, well, Anthony? I like the four foot five, three hundred pound TSA agents that treat me <laughs> like a literal slave, and I think that's good. And I think it's good that they've never stopped a terrorist ever. Right. And every single time where an engineer novice tries to put a weapon inside, a faulty weapon inside of their coat or whatever, they can get through every single time. I like the fact that if you ask them about their radiation naked body scanners, they'll tell you they're perfectly safe. Even though in the 90s, a commission on radiation found that back then when they were using them in isolated cases, it was causing hundreds of cases of cancer isolated mm -hmm. in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Who knows how many it is now? I like all that. So I think the TSA is good. <laughs> and I think cancer from their naked body scanners, which, by the way, they put pregnant women now through and little kids and stuff. I think that's good. And I think passenger is a perfect term. It's closer to slave, I think. But, you know, overall, they're definitely keeping us safe. Well, you know, it, it, it's just how they control us. It's another one of these techniques of control, just like we were talking about spying on people, wanting to know if their propaganda through the media is working. They need that feedback. They need to be able to monitor us everywhere. They need to look at all of our metadata. And this is also a part of this. This is slave training. I can put my hands on you at any time, and there's nothing you can do about it. And if you let me do that, I'm going to instantly reward you in kind of this Pavlovian, Skinner-esque type of way. I'm going to instantly reward you with letting you get on the plane. Yeah, well, think so about here's this. your positive reinforcement. You just let me do this, and you can get on the plane. We're being treated like lab rats. If we let the NSA win, I got arrested for walking in their parking lot. If we let the NSA win, the TSA will be the physical arm that comes into your house and searches you. If we let them win, if we let them set the precedent, the TSA is coming to your door. That's the physical manifestation of the NSA. That's right. It's metastasizing, just as all these government agencies are metastasizing. Well, that's it for today's show. Alex is going to be back tomorrow at the usual time, 11 Central, 12 Eastern. Don't miss it. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach.